what are the genetic effects of uh, radio frequency uh, fields uh, that are emitted from uh, cell phones? Now, to start with, this is a 10-minute talk, so I kind of simplify uh, everything. Uh, so, uh, so uh, if you have questions, just uh, you can ask me specific questions. You can ask me after the, the talk. And now, the first thing that I have to uh, say is that we are not dealing with one entity uh, radio frequency field. Uh, it is a, a very complex uh, uh, entity that has different uh, uh, qualities. Uh, for example, the frequency, uh, duration of exposure, the waveforms, uh, those are the built-in quality of the exposure that determines the effects of the, uh, the exposure. So when people tell you that, well, radio frequency field causes this, uh, it does not uh, generalize to all uh, uh, radio frequency fields. You have to ask, uh, what are the frequency? What are uh, uh, the duration of exposure? Uh, what kind of moderation that you use uh, in your exposure? So genetic, uh, the material, genetic material is DNA, uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. Uh, so one conclusion is that radio frequency fields can damage DNA. And cause, of course, when you damage DNA, uh, the cell try to repair. And in that process, it make mistake, and it causes uh, genetic mutation. And of course, genetic mutation can uh, possibly lead to uh, development of cancer. So, so this is a DNA schematic drawing of DNA uh, molecule, uh, which is also called a double helix, uh, which is basically like uh, two spaghetti twisted together. And uh, they are joined by this so-called basis. Uh, Martin Frank was talking about this GAGA. Uh, uh, -GA, those, those are these bases. So these two strains, these are DNA strains, the two strains of uh, DNA, uh, DNA molecule. And, and once in a while, bricks can form on the strain. Now, if a brick is formed on one of the strains, it's called single strain bricks. If very close by, on the other strain, there's another brick, the whole molecule will separate. Uh, because they're so close together, you a brick form here, a brick form here, the molecule will separate. And that will form some, something called double strand brick. Uh, now, double strand brick is a big problem because the cell uh, lost the information of how to repair the DNA. And that is a time that mutation can happen. Uh, a single strand brick is not that uh, serious because the other information is on the other side of the, the, the the, uh, the molecule. Now, uh, in the RF uh, radio frequency study, most of the uh, DNA study use uh, something called the comic assay, uh, which is uh, uh, a very sensitive uh, method for doing DNA uh, damage. Uh, you can measure DNA damage within one cell. Uh, and it's possible to do single strand break measure the single strain break and also measure double strain break. Now, while we're talking about spaghetti, if you have a bowl of spaghetti and then you put a pair of scissors into the, the bowl and chop, and the more you chop, the more small pieces will form, right? So now if there's a possible that you pour all this uh, spaghetti out and count how many of these small fragments come out, the more fragment, the more damage, right? So this is basically the, the principle of the common assay, is that we isolate the cell uh, from, for example, from the brain, and then we take the DNA from that particular cell, and then we pull the DNA out from this DNA ball. And 
by doing that, the small fragments will come out. The more fragments you see, the more the damage. It's because you, that, uh, that breaks form on the, on the strain. And now this is a brain cell of a rat. Uh, isolated from the, from, the, from the brain of the rat. This is a DNA ball uh, that forms, uh, there's some fragment coming out uh, because the DNA is constantly being attacked and, and break. And of course the cell can repair. Uh, now this is a cell from a brain cell without uh, radiation. So you can basically form a very spherical uh, a ball this is uh, two cells, two DNA balls, uh, after exposure to uh, radio frequency radiation for two hours. And, uh, and you can see the, the fragment coming out from the ball. The, the more fragment, the more damage, right? So let's go back. All right, it takes time. So this is without radiation. This is with radiation. So you can actually count the, uh, you, you can use a computer program to count the how many uh, fragments can come, in, uh, come out from the, from the uh, this DNA ball. And then you will see the, uh, then you give you some kind of quantitative measurement of the, uh, the, radi uh, the effect. Here are a, a list of, uh, of uh, uh, publications that uh, have been uh, showing DNA damage uh, in, uh, a, a, uh, after exposure to uh, radio frequency radiation from uh, cell phones, mobile phone radiation. Uh, if you go into the literature of microwave radiation, the general a spectrum, you will see more of these publications. And um, so, uh, <clears throat> so each, each of this is one publication, a peer review publication. Now, what uh, causes the damage, uh, radio frequency uh, field damage, DNA damage? Uh, one thing that come, I think is a very promising explanation is free radical formation uh, from cells. Uh, every cell that use, uh, uses uh, oxygen will form free radicals. And well, my students usually ask me what, the, what are free radicals? Uh, so they're very s active uh, molecules. Uh, if uh, imagine you have a ballroom and people are dancing inside the ballroom. And suddenly, uh, Fred Astaire comes into the room and grab the lady and start dancing. Now, how many ladies can dance with uh, Fred Astaire? So the whole ballroom will go into chaos. So that is the free radical. Yeah. Okay. Now, so we know that this, uh, how do you counteract the free radical? Uh, we take antioxidants. Uh, for example, vitamin C, vitamin E, the antioxidant. So antioxidants are actually is, uh, is a uh, uh, ginger rogers. So if you put it into a ballroom, and eventually ginger roger will dance with uh, Fred Astaire, so the whole ballroom will go, huh? Oh, of course. <laughs> so Dr. Haberman was talking about this, uh, uh, this using antioxidant uh, to, uh, to, to, to study the effect of free radicals paper we published on using antioxidant to block the radio frequency effect of DNA damage it was done in 1994 and published in 1995. And we actually use uh, more specific compounds, so-called spin track compounds, which uh, is more potent than vitamin C and vitamin E. Now, are there publications that show that free radicals uh, are form? or increase in free radical activity in cells after exposure to radio frequency radiation. Yes, there are quite a lot of paper uh, published. Actually, I have not 
uh, it was too late, and I could not finish all the, the, the paper that show that radio frequency fields enhance free radical activities. And in that sense, it will, when you increase free radical activity, you induce free uh, uh, oxidative stress uh, and damage uh, that Martin talked about earlier. So what are the possible consequences of free radical uh, formation uh, or uh, increase in fact free radical activities in cells? Of course, these are very active compounds that can cause molecular damages uh, inside cells. Uh, for example, one is DNA damage, protein damage, or another thing is lipid damage of lipids, cell membrane lipids, which is, uh, can cause the cell to die. So the consequences, as I mentioned earlier, is that one possibility is it can cause uh, cancer because of uh, mutation. Uh, formation of uh, mutation in cells. Now, uh, in order to have cancer, the mutation has to be very specific on a certain part of the gene. Uh, and a lot of our genes are actually useless. Uh, they're not doing anything. So, you, so cancer is not always happening with mutation. So it has to be damaged on at a certain point. Uh, and some people even propose that you need at least two critical damages in order to trigger a cancer. So cancer is a possibility. And other possibilities that since you damage the DNA uh, in the cell or protein in the cell, the, the, the function will change uh, with, uh, uh, with this kind of damage. And there are also reports, a list of reports on electrophysiological uh, changes and functions, uh, behavior of uh, uh, animals, uh, humans, after exposure to uh, radio frequency fields from uh, cell phones. So it's quite a lot of studies. Uh, it come, the first study was uh, one kissing uh, in 1995, uh, look at the EEG study. Uh, yeah, to encephalogram, the, 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 uh, the, the firing of uh, nerve cells in the, in the brain. Another possibility is cell death. So if you have a lot of damage uh, to the DNA, the protein, lipid, uh, the cell die, and we found that apoptosis, uh, which is a, is a form of cell death that can occur after uh, exposure to uh, cell phone uh, uh, radio frequency uh, uh, radiation. So, are there reports on cell death and change in morphology? Yeah, of course, because Dr. Selfit is sitting here, and uh, Henrietta Libby. So these are the uh, morphological changes. Now, what are the consequences of cell death in the brain? And, and of course, the uh, neurons cannot be, the nerve cells cannot be replaced. And one possibility is the uh, uh, little degenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. Now, we don't have any evidence on that yet. Uh, there are some evidence on, uh, on uh, with the uh, uh, extremely low frequency field, uh, 60 cycle, 50 cycle fields. Um, yeah. As we mentioned earlier, that uh, there's a very good similarity between uh, radio frequency field and uh, extremely low frequency field. And we, we actually, we know a lot more about uh, e extremely low 60 cycles f uh, field than uh, radio frequency field because we had this uh, NIH uh, EHS uh, EMF rapid program that uh, Chris uh, uh, Portier uh, was in charge in, 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 in uh, the last, uh, you know, I think, the 1990s. Uh, now, so that's another thing that I think is, could be interesting is that the, this kind of changes can, depending on how much damage you accumulate over time, uh, you can cause change in, you can cause cancer, you can also cause cell death. Now, can these two balance out when a cell is beginning to become cancerous? 
can the radiation cause push it and kill it, kill the, kill the cell. So uh, in that sense, when we are running an experiment, there's a possibility that you can actually see a decrease in cancer uh, occurrence uh, because the cell die before they uh, become uh, cancerous. And I, since there was no funding on, uh, on, on uh, the health effects or, or, of uh, radio frequency field, I have switched to cancer research uh, on using radio frequency and uh, uh, EMF, actually, yeah, geomagnetic field. And we, one of the things we found out is that cancer cells are more susceptible uh, to extremely low frequency field and uh, 60, uh, uh, 20 kilohertz uh, fields and than normal cells. So that's the possibility that this, the, the a, a large use of cell phone can actually prevent the cancer from, uh, uh, from developing. Um, well, I think uh, that's, that's, that's all I want to say. <laughs>